you. It's okay time. here. Okay. Yeah. Great. Okay. Okay, good morning, afternoon, uh, and uh, evening to everybody. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me to this uh, event, which is the state of the planet. Uh, it is at the critical stage. Wars, including the possible use of nuclear weapon, pandemics, ecological crisis are reducing the humanity's hope for a better future. Pandemics and wars are embedded in our present time, as well as global warming and related effects, the destruction of ecosystems, the reduction of biodiversity, soil degradation, uh, freshwater depletion, uh, pollution are already become the perspective of our near future. We know well that humans are the cause of the current state of the planet. That is critical because the state of humanity is at a dangerous stage. The ecological crisis is the effect of the crisis of the human being. The old logics that uh, govern the world are bringing humanity close to a tipping point. 500 years of economic development and globalization have been uh, sustained by the ideas that the natural resources of the planet were infinitive, and humans have thought to be able to fight and win through science and technology, the millennium world with the nature considered dangerous and to escape from problems by creating a digital world in which they are able to defeat uh, death, illness, frustration, and to make possible what is impossible in real life. The old logics of powers and power and domination that shape the relationship among human beings and between them and nature do not work. This is what science tells us through its periodic reports. Human development has created well-being in a large part of the world, but in the remaining part, even greater inequalities have increased the environment has suffered unsustainable human uh, pressure. And it is time that humans radically change the logics with which they manage their vital niche. In this worrying picture, it is necessary and urgent to rethink human relationships and build a new vision of our being into nature. We need to reconsider our societies, their joints, their productive, legislative and political structures, the educational programs, our lifestyle. We need an idea of future grounded on geoscience knowledge and based on a renewed ethical frame of reference to guide human choices. The ecological crisis is a planetary crisis, regardless of the causes and who produce them. The consequence of a way of life that is practiced in one part of the planet and is at the most coveted in the rest. Nonetheless, the paradigm shift necessary to address the complexity of the global challenges at stake will have to affect all peoples of the earth. We need a new interpretative categories of reality and a systemic view of the planet. We must help our young generations to conceive the world in a different way. Can geosciences have a role in identifying new human perspectives? The answer is absolutely yes. Geosciences can be at the forefront of this ethical turning point. Why? Because there are historic, observational, interpretative and systemic sciences of natural reality. They can shape the vision of the planet of new generations. Geosciences provide knowledge ways of thinking and acting on a rational basis. They provide us with tools to investigate the complex relationships of the Earth system, to know more about our planet in the universe. They are signs of physical, chemical, and biological limits. They are capable of making us transcend the limited perspective of the human perceptions of time and space. They can contribute to create a nexus between the scientific rationality and the metaphysical dimension of humans. But to be honest, there is also a downside. Even geosciences have contributed to the current ecological crisis, since they also work to power the fossil fuel industry, large-scale mining, the search for natural resources, without considering the ecosystem's vulnerability. Of course, this was what society, politics, the ruling classes required. And geoscientists didn't care much of the ethical and social consequences of their actions. This should not be forgotten. Science is ethically neutral, 
but humans who make science and use scientific achievements are not neutral. Nowadays, we should look upon what positive they have done, elaborated, produced. Their contribution to understanding natural cycles and interconnections, processes and dynamics of natural phenomena, geology has contributed to the birth of modern thought, making us aware of the existence of a deep time and influencing the perception of our decentralized position in the natural system. This is the great cultural legacy of geology. Today, geosciences must demonstrate to be capable of contributing to build a new world, energy transition, defense against geohazards, natural resources management, geoenvironmental education, and geoconservation and restoration are topics geosciences can deal with in order to serve society, the public interests, the demand of younger generations to live in a cleaner and safer world. Geoscientists have contributed to, define, to defining planetary boundaries and physical, chemical, and biological thresholds not to be exceeded to avoid compromising the Earth's habitability for humans. Now it is time for geoscientists to focus on key concepts such as sustainability, prevention, adaptation, and education that are the new categories on which to structure the decision-making processes of the next decades. Geoscience community is also called to address hot topics such as geoengineering and deep sea ocean mining. Now that global warming is beginning to show itself in a tangible way, the urgency to find solutions is also reviving the debate on the possible use of geoengineering that is a set of techniques for deliberate intervention on natural systems to modify the environment and reverse triggered climate change. Are we aware of the numerous issues geoengineering poses on ethical, social, and geopolitical levels? Growing population and green economy require increasing amount of minerals. For years, mining activity has been managed in a responsible way without respecting local communities and the environment and the exploitation of the extensive underwater mineral deposits is seen as an opportunity, but on the other hand, the oceans are huge and almost unknown areas of the planet with very delicate ecological balances and the biodiversity extremely vulnerable to small environmental changes. The levels of uncertainty characterizing our knowledge of biotic and abiotic underwater systems are perhaps still too great for us to be able to take definitive decisions on the deep sea ocean mining, but probably others have already taken these decisions. To conclude, geosciences are called upon to demonstrate a usefulness in serving society and protecting the natural environment. Mining, water management, or defense against geohazards are activities that are at the geoscience society interface and require to be supported by an ethical framework of values, able to guide geoscientists in their work to responsibly face global anthropogenic changes. This is the goal of geoethics, that is being defined as the research and reflection on the values which underpin appropriate behaviors and practice wherever human activities interact with the Earth system. Geoethics is an ethics of responsibility towards the Earth, its inhabitants, and its nature. Geoethics is a great opportunity to also give geosciences that social and environmental perspective which could make them the leading sciences for this new millennium. I wish to thank Silvia Pepoloni for helping me in preparing this talk and thank you for the attention.